I spent 100 days in a mythical creature world. Gorgons, sea serpents, mermaids, and my favorite, dragons. I mean, nothing to worry about, right? My goal for this 100 days will be to defeat a level 5 dragon, literally the deadliest thing in the game, as well as tame my very own baby dragon. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. By the way, tell me in the comments what is your favorite mythical creature and why. On day one, I spotted this unicorn and I decided to tame her, but I didn't have a saddle, so yeah, I guess that wasn't very useful. I continued on my way towards a village and suddenly I saw this huge dragon lizard called an overworld drake. And he ran after me, so obviously I hid inside a village house. After this glorious start, I decided to actually do something useful and I mined a bit of wood, collected some crops and killed the iron golems to get a few ingots. On day two, I came across this two-legged purple dude and I accidentally killed him. And now I'm just wondering why did I put this in the video? And now things get spicy. Basically, I came across this empty dragon lair and I thought I could just, you know, have a little look. But no, there is actually this super angry fire dragon that destroyed me in less than two seconds. Yeah. I was determined to take my revenge right now. Well, well, no, actually not right now. I still had 98 days, but I would at least try and get my stuff back. I quickly made my way back to where the dragon was, and when I saw him kill all these poor cows, I decided to bury myself inside a hole. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> nah, nah, don't worry. I'm not gonna give up this quick. On day three, I got all my stuff back, and I realized that the only way I would survive in this world was by getting some good armor and some tools. So obviously, I decided to go mining and came across this level five dragon lair underground that I immediately blocked up. And on day four, I took the very wise decision to run as far away as possible from all these dragons and back to the village. On day five, I found these adorable six-legged creatures called root stalkers, as well as a miniature green helicopter. To tame the root stalkers, I needed to feed them some eggs, so I decided to round up a bunch of chickens. I also gathered some future resources for enchanting and admired some reindeers. I suddenly heard one of my chickens shriek and basically it had laid a rotten egg. When I broke that egg, out popped a cockatrice. I guess you could describe it as half chicken, half deadly lizard. I had a quick look on internet to see what I could name him, but you know, the names they gave were absolutely terrible. Yeah, I guess my channel was named after a chicken. I managed to tame my first root stalker and I realized I could actually put him on top of my head, which was really funny. And on day eight, I tamed another three root stalkers and placed them all on top of me, obviously. I named the trio Harry, Ron and Hermione and the other one Dumbledore. As for the cockatrice, I didn't choose Tootsie. I'm not that vain, guys. I chose Gandalf instead. It was time for a little gang to find a proper home and I came across this sandy biome and I thought it would be perfect. I immediately made myself at home. I planted a bit of sugar cane, spotted a few gazelles in the distance and then I came across a savannah village. I didn't make a very good first impression because I accidentally hit two villagers. I went around the houses looting the chests and I actually got a saddle so I decided to tame a unicorn and I was able to ride her this time. After that dragon terrorized me on day two, I really was determined to get a full netherite armor. But first of all, I needed to find some diamonds. I therefore started building a mine and I decided to let Dumbledore come along with me. After getting a few resources like iron and gold, I made my way back to the surface and made sure to kill that creeper carefully because I didn't want him to harm my new friends. I spent the day mainly focusing on farming, so I planted some more sugarcane and some crops. And then it was time to head back down to the mine with Dumbledore. And it was actually really cute because he had fallen asleep on my head. And I guess he was bringing me luck because soon enough I found some diamonds. 
I got extremely lucky. Basically, every time I found a vein of diamonds, there were like seven or eight diamonds all at once. So yeah, by the end of day 13, I was actually able to craft myself a chest plate, some diamond leggings and a helmet, as well as a diamond pickaxe because I wanted to get into the nether as quickly as possible to get my netherite armor. So obviously I made my way back up to the surface to get a bucket of water and I started mining some obsidian to get enough to make a portal as well as an enchanting table. I continued mining until I reached a mineshaft, but I didn't go in straight away because in this world you can come across some giant centipedes as well as some very unfriendly trolls. So yeah, I thought it would be much safer for me to get the help of Dumbledore as well as Harry because it was all about the teamwork with them. I would basically just hit monsters once and they would finish off the jobs. So that was really practical with creepers because at least I would be sure they wouldn't explode. So after the three of us killed off a bunch of creepers, I actually spotted a big opening with like loads of monsters. It just gave me the chills just looking at it. After getting a saddle in one of the mineshaft chests, I decided to make my way back up to the surface and I crafted an enchanting table as well as the nether portal. I actually randomly caught fire, I really couldn't understand why, it was actually because of this flower for some reason. And then when I went back to get some cobblestone in the overworld, this ghast shot a fireball at me and it almost broke the portal and I teleported just in time. I then took the wise decision of building a sort of protective um, house, I wouldn't even say it's a house, it's just a bunch of walls, you know, so that a ghast wouldn't try and break my portal once again. I was actually glad that my plan was going to level 14 to mine some ancient debris because there were like a ton of bone serpents in the lava and like hoglins everywhere even though it wasn't a crimson forest. I mean lovely. I came across my very first ancient debris. To be honest, I was a little bit disappointed there was only one in the vein. And a little bit later, after mining a bunch of quartz, I came upon another block of ancient debris. I came across another two-legged dude, but this time he was orange and he dropped some nether warts. I also came across a hoglin that had spawned on my way back, but he was pretty easy to kill. Once I was back in the overworld, Gandalf greeted me with a lovely little head shake and then I set to work to build a few enclosures because I wanted to get some sheep, some chickens and some cows. On day 20, I was off to find some chickens and Gandalf really stunned me. He had actually spotted a skeleton from super far and had killed him just in time. Soon enough, I came back with the chickens and I really loved the fact that they were loads of different colors. On day 21, I set out to find some cows. I really looked everywhere. I spotted loads of different animals, foxes, beetles, etc. And yeah, what had happened to the cows? Ah! On day 22, I passed by my very first chicken farm and I decided to release them all. And finally, by the end of the day, I found some cows. On day 23, I decided to settle down, but I didn't want to build something incredible because basically dragons can destroy builds in an instant. So really, I didn't want to have my heart broken building something incredible for nothing. So instead, I did something quite simple, just a little hole for my house to put my chests in and my bed. At one point I killed off some pillagers and I had the bad omen effect so I decided to drink some milk because I didn't want any harm to happen to the villagers next door. I also decided to bring back the unicorn I had tamed and I decided to name her Princess Candy Sparkles Starlight Twinkles Diamonds. Yeah, let's go for Betty. On day 25, I bought Betty and Gandalf with me to the village because we were gonna do something quite exciting. Taming an overworld drake. To do so, I had to place a saddle on its back and then mount it. But that's not all. It would actually kick me off and hit me a bunch of times. So I had to repeat it several times until finally the overworld drake was tamed. And obviously I had to name him Kiki after Drake's song. And of course I had to ask him, Kiki, do you love me? And finally, I headed home accompanied by Betty Gandalf and our new family member, Kiki. 
On day 26, not much happened. We were just attacked by a few pillagers, but Gandalf finished them super quickly and I had a second banner to decorate my house hole. There was another reason I didn't want to be spending 20 days on building a house that would be destroyed by dragons. Basically, I wanted to find or tame as many mythical animals as I could. But yeah, before that I ran into quite a bit of trouble. Basically, we were attacked by a cockatrice and the thing was, it made my vision all blurry and just by staring at me he would give me damage. So yeah, that was pretty terrifying and I was really happy to have Gandalf here with me. And by the way, you must have noticed we have a brand new cockatrice addition. His name is Bilbo. After the stressful fight was over, I gave some seeds to the cockatrice so that they could heal and I also let Kiki eat a bit of grass. On day 28, I decided to set off on an adventure accompanied by Bilbo. I mean, anyway, Mr. Bilbo Baggins was not new to adventures, that's for sure. We soon enough found a village and Bilbo killed off the Iron Golem. And then when I was staring at the peaceful sea, suddenly I spotted a sea serpent. It was huge, it was jumping everywhere. So I went to have a look at it on top of a little mountain and guess what? It actually attacked me. So I got terrified, ran away and realized that Bilbo had probably gone to attack him. So I was so scared that it would kill Bilbo. So I went to kill the sea serpent and thankfully Bilbo suddenly teleported back to me. And honestly, it made me so happy because if there is something I hate in Minecraft, it's losing my pets, my friends. I really, really hate that because they're so nice with you. They do everything everything to protect you and it's just so nice to have them you know a little bit of company with their cute little heads so yeah tell me in the comments if you think the same way on day 31 i found a majestic flying serpent bird dragon <laughs> that's how you could describe the amphi there I also came across a hippocampus. I actually tamed two and I put a saddle on them and when I started riding them underwater, it would just dismount me. So yeah, that was a bit weird. And when I rode him on land, he took a bunch of damage in a block. So yeah, that was a little bit tricky, you know, trying to learn not to get dismounted or kill the hippocampus. That night, I also discovered that if you interact with them with a stick, basically they can lie down on their side. On day 33, I finally mastered the riding of the hippocampus. Basically, you don't ride in the water, but you ride on top of the water. And actually, each time I accidentally pointed towards the water, it would dismount me. So yeah, it's not very practical, but once you get the hang of it, it's okay. By the way, the green hippocampus would be Dory and the pink one would be Nemo. After I'd gotten Nemo back, the four of us headed back home. I decided to put them in the sheep enclosure for the time being, but I would of course make them a pond just for them. And then I spent the rest of the day taking care of the animals. On day 35, I went back mining for ancient debris and I just realized I haven't given you any facts yet. So let's go ahead. So the name hippocampus is derived from Greek, hippo meaning horse and kampos meaning sea monster. The hippocampus is also a region of the brain that is associated primarily with memory. So this time around, I managed to find a vein of two ancient debris, which was pretty nice, as well as an extra one at the end. And I also collected some red geodes and I made a pretty good pickaxe out of it. By the way, if any of you are interested in the mods, I will be giving you all the mods at the end of the video. And now for a few dragon facts. Basically, it was noted that dragon legends appear in nearly all cultures because humans are universally afraid of snake-like creatures. In China, dragons symbolize wealth, power, and leadership. And actually, emperors were believed to be descendants of dragons. I noticed that the hippocampus were getting a little bit bullied by the sheep and pushed around, so I wanted to make them a little pond just for them. I also wanted to start a bit of enchanting, so I went to have a look for some cows because I was missing a lot of leather. I actually came across this humongous dragon skeleton and looted it, but I hadn't seen that there was actually a drake right behind and he started attacking me. So of course, Bilbo and Gandalf protected me the best they could, but he managed to kill Gandalf. Yeah, that was just great. And I was telling you about how much I hated losing animals and pets. And that just happened. 
and I will for sure miss his company and his adorable little head shakes. On the good side, the overworld Drake had dropped six leather, but I still went to vent my frustration on some poor cows. <laughs> Once I was done, I made my way back home and I actually passed by the village and looted a chest I'd forgotten. And then on day 40, I made a little room for the enchanting and I actually got super lucky because my very first enchant was protection floor for my leggings. I then spent the rest of the afternoon working on the hippocampus pond and I actually bought them over and they were very very happy to swim around finally. On day 41 I continued working on the hippocampus enclosure. So I started off by smelting some cobblestone to make some stone bricks and I also chopped down a bit of birch wood to make some fences. So basically I made a first layer out of stone bricks and then I added some fences over and to finish off I added a layer of quartz blocks. Once that was done I obviously added a bunch of seagrass and I also decided to bring over some salmons to give a bit of company to the hippocampus and I even renamed two Bob and Bill. On day 42, I went back to the nether and I really found it adorable to see Ron sleeping away as if nothing mattered and especially as if he was in the safest place ever. After finding a bit of ancient debris and collecting levels from mining quartz, I was able to enchant my pickaxe with efficiency 4 and I also got fortune 3, which was pretty cool. On day 43 I went back into the nether and I got super lucky because I found a vein of three ancient debris. Later on I also found a few red geodes and finally I found another vein of ancient debris. So yeah soon enough I would be able to upgrade my armor to netherite. Mythical creatures originate from ancient mythologies, stories and folklore. They are nowadays often present in books, films and games. Mythical creatures often have supernatural abilities and unique characteristics. The sea serpent, for example, is a legendary marine animal that traditionally resembles an enormous snake. The belief in huge creatures that inhabited the deep was widespread throughout the ancient world. Although tales of sea serpents have continued to exist throughout the centuries, no animal has been captured so far to prove the existence. Finally, I had collected enough ancient debris to upgrade most of my armor to netherite. So yeah, that was pretty cool. And I also had protection for on top of that. So hopefully I would be invincible. I continued mining plenty of quartz to get some levels and I managed to get infinity on my bow. I only had power three to go with it, but yeah, it wasn't really a big deal. On day 48, I went to mine a bunch of gold because I was planning on taming an amphi there. You know, the sort of flying lizard we had seen earlier. Basically, what I'm doing is not needed, but I had watched a tutorial of someone who had eaten golden apples while taming it, so I decided to be nice and safe. So I went to the plains biome and I would basically chop down all of these bushes and I could get plenty of apples doing so. Once I'd collected enough apples on day 49, I crafted a few more golden apples and I actually killed off this drake. And to be honest, it was out of anger and vengeance because I'd lost Gandalf, but yeah. Promise I won't do that again. I actually decided to bring Frodo on this adventure because he was the newest member of the family. When we arrived back to the jungle, I spotted a Namphi there. So first thing I had to do was shoot him so that he would attack me and I had to climb onto his back. And obviously it did not go as planned. He didn't come and attack me. He just flew away. So great. And then I was going to follow him through the swamp when I noticed a three-headed snake spitting venom at everything around him. So yeah, I decided to have a look for another one. So yeah, I quickly found another one. I tried shooting at it and I kept on missing it. It was so difficult to shoot at it because they really do fly pretty high. I actually found another two and just followed them around for ages and ages, shot every single arrow I could and I could not hit them. They were just so far and they would move everywhere. It was really frustrating. So I decided to go back to the jungle because maybe one would kind of get caught up, you know, in the trees. 
and luckily I managed to finally shoot one so he fell out of the sky, I jumped on his back and then he started attacking me like crazy so I ate plenty of golden apples but this was very stupid because I found out afterwards that I could have just, you know, put my shield up and he would hit the shield instead of me. But yeah, I'm just not very smart. I just follow the tutorial, didn't ask any questions. But yeah, there we have it. I managed to tame a Namphi there. I decided to name him Paco because I thought it suited his elegance. And now it was time to go home. So first of all, I flew with Paco over to the village and then I went to get Bilbo who couldn't fly and I bought him over in my boat. I finally realized that the smartest way would actually be to make Paco follow me because he could fly. Like that, I wouldn't have to go back and forth to get Bilbo. From days 54 to 55, it was time to do a bit of trading. So being super smart, I basically stole the wheat from the village and sold it back to a villager. I mean, he didn't even notice, so no problem. Once I collected some emeralds, it was time to get some librarians because I really wanted mending for my netherite armor and I'm sure you can understand why. So yeah, the long process of breaking the lectern, placing it down, then checking if the villager has anything good, started. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I find trading with villagers so boring. So you know what? Let's do a few facts. The Western concept of mermaids as beautiful, seductive singers may have been influenced by the sirens of Greek mythology, which were originally half bird-like, but came to be pictured as half fish-like in the Christian era. Centuries ago, manatees were mistaken for mermaids. The confusion may seem absurd now, but back then little was known of the sea beasts that lived in the ocean. Oh wait, let's stop the facts for two seconds just to appreciate how stupid this villager is. Basically, I would destroy his own house to make sticks and I would sell them to him and he would be totally okay with it. Well, it's almost as bad as stealing someone's crops and selling them back to them. On day 59, I finally had enough resources to buy four mending books off of the librarian and I immediately put mending on all my armor because no, 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 I didn't mind all this ancient debris from my armor to break. I did feel pretty invincible, so I spent the entire night just killing off a bunch of monsters. And it was also a way, you know, to get my levels back up and to collect some bones. On day 60, I continued working on the contours of the hippocampus enclosure, kind of like terraforming. And then I started working on my other pet's enclosure when it started raining. So at that point I knew I could tame a butterfly leviathan, or I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. Leviathan. But basically it's these huge dragonfish-like creatures that I had spotted earlier on. So basically I lured him on shore and every time he would do his lightning attack, I could feed him some meat and gradually I could manage to tame him. It was quite tricky because I had all these monsters attacking me and I got struck by lightning a bunch of times. But yeah, finally I managed to tame him. And by the way, for me to tame him, he has to do his lightning attack and he can only do that in the rain. So yeah, that's why I basically waited for the rain to do that. So he's very fast in water, but not very fast on land. Two hours later. As for the name, I actually chose QB because he has a very squarish face. Yeah, it's not really the best name, but it's the first one that popped in my mind. I then made a flute that was supposed to call Paco so that he would come towards me and it didn't work. On a more serious note, Paco was missing quite a bit of health, so I decided to go over to the jungle to collect some cocoa beans because that is basically how you heal him. I then spotted this giant ant, uh, didn't really know what to do, so I killed it and flew off because, yeah, I didn't want to get mixed up in all these giant ant thingies. Like, sometimes I'm so happy to be alive in 2022 because if we look at some fossils that were found, like of ants the size of hummingbirds, it really doesn't make me want to live in that period. Well, now that I think of it, there is the giant Amazonian ant, but yeah, it's a little bit smaller. But anyway, it's literally at the opposite of the planet for me. So yeah, that should be all right. On day 64, I finished building the enclosure for my land animals. 
and I'd let Bilbo wander around and he found the only hole in the enclosure, so yeah, I had to get him back in. On day 65, I found some rabbits and I actually decided to breed them because I could tame a hippogriff, if I found one, with a rabbit's foot. After that, I went back mining, so first of all to get levels, but of course to get some more netherite because I still wanted to upgrade my sword to netherite. I then went back to the village and I decided to breed my two librarians because first of all I wanted to get power 5 on my bow, I also wanted to get infinity because I wanted to make an enclosure for QB and I knew that infinity on my bucket would be very useful. So yeah, I set to work destroying all the village houses to sell them to that Fletcher, he was very very happy with all the sticks. I also was finally able to upgrade my sword to netherite, so that was pretty fun. And then Kiki told me, maybe we could go and find him a friend. I had spotted this albino drake earlier on, so I went to tame her and manage at the first go. Well, maybe I am vain because I decided to name her Tootsie without the T after Drake's song Tootsie Slide. I also decided to breed them, but it didn't work probably because they weren't male and female, but who cares. On day 70, I realized that QB was not enjoying himself in the hot sun, so I brought him down to the river whilst he was waiting for me to make his enclosure. So obviously his enclosure would not be as big as the sea, but at least he would be safe of sea serpents, and I wanted to make it big enough for him to swim around, meaning I would need a lot of water. And that is why I traded with this librarian to get an infinity book so that I could put it on my bucket and get infinite water. And now let's talk about a very famous mythological animal, the unicorn. So it basically resembles a horse or a goat with a single horn on its forehead. Those who drank from its horn were thought to be protected from stomach trouble, epilepsy and poison. Most of the time, the horns that were sold as unicorn horns were actually rhinoceros ones. On day 73, I had dug out the huge pond for QB and I actually brought him up for him to have a look at it, you know, to kind of see if he liked it. And he said that he would like, you know, some chisel stone for the border, you know, he thought it looked nice and elegant. From day 74 to 75, I went on a little adventure with QB, well it wasn't very scary actually. We just went to the jungle because there was a coral reef in the waters and I collected loads of coral fans, coral blocks, as well as some lily pads. Lastly, I collected some bamboo and we swam home. I realized I really didn't like the hippocampus enclosure, so I basically destroyed it all and started from scratch. Well, except for the water, thankfully. But what I did is I got rid of the fence. I just wanted the enclosure to be a nice pond, so I put, you know, some lilies, lily pads, some bamboo, and some sugar cane all around. In a way, it would look a bit like a Japanese koi pond. And then the wandering trader came along to say hello, and obviously I kindly said hello back, as I always do. Oh, and if you're wondering how birds actually learned how to fly, this is exactly how and yes, I know we learned so much real information in my videos. I also used some cobblestone, some coarse dirt and some gravel to make a path, as well as some archwood leaves because they were purple and they really gave a nice little mystical effect. So yeah, here is the finished result of the pond. I also added this little bridge. You will see this bridge won't exist very long because of a creature starting with the letter D. Yeah, I'm not foreshadowing a horrible event at all. <laughs> And then on day 78, I started adding a bunch of water to QB's pond and honestly, I didn't think it would take so long to do. On day 79, Paco and I went on a small adventure. Basically, we would find some archwood trees and I would chop them down for saplings, you know, to get plenty of leaves. And I was so excited when I spotted these alpine dragons. They were really beautiful, majestic, and actually quite friendly. So I decided I would try and tame one. Uh, guys, if you're really soft-hearted, please don't look at the next few seconds of the video. Basically, to tame an alpine, you have to feed him a live bee. So yeah, that's a little bit sad. Um, yeah, may the bee rest in peace. 
But yeah, I had managed to tame this alpine dragon and it was so nice to fly on him. He was so steady. And after that, I spotted this structure in the rock and I think it was the home of the Gorgon. I went to have a look, but the alpine followed me and he started suffocating. So I decided we would go home for the moment and think about it. I decided to name the alpine Drogon, which is the name of the dragon in Game of Thrones. I also decided to rebuild the enclosure for the land animals and just removed all the fences and made a pond. On day 83, the nightmare begins. Basically, a nice dragon started attacking my base and killing all my animals. I decided to use the help of all my mythical creatures and I flew up into the sky on Drogon's back to try and lure him away. That's when I spotted a green fire dragon destroying the village and spitting fire at my base. Drogon caught fire and died. It was at this moment that he knew. Which left me falling through midair. Thankfully, I fell in a river and my overworld drakes did everything they could do to attack the dragon, but it caught me in its grip and killed me. When I respawned, I was in complete shock. I couldn't realize what had happened, I didn't know who had died, but thankfully my overworld drakes teleported to me, meaning they hadn't died. And guess what? I lost all my stuff on day 84. Great. But on the good side, as my armor and my sword were made out of netherite, they didn't burn up in the flames. I had said I would never take revenge again, but actually, I will. The dragon had killed all the villagers, except the Fletcher, I don't know how he survived. And he had killed Drogon, Hermione, and Bilbo. I immediately looked up how to kill a dragon. Number one, get fire resistance potions. And for that, I was truly in luck because there was actually a nether fortress right next to my portal and I had not noticed it before that. I carefully made my way through the nether fortress and soon enough I came by some blazes. So obviously I shot at them to get a few blaze rods and I also found a chest with an extra saddle. On day 95 I continued my way through the fortress killing as many blazes as possible because I wanted to have enough blaze rods to make a brewing stand as well as some potions. At one point I accidentally hit a zombified piglin, but thankfully he was on his own, so nobody else attacked me. Phew. I then did a little more mining, you know, to get a few extra levels and realized it would take me ages to get to level 30. So I made the decision to go back to the overworld, make a brewing stand, and then I realized I didn't have any magma cream, so I hopped back into the nether and killed off a few magma cubes. And there was actually this sort of fiery wolf that would set me on fire, so I killed him. I really didn't know what it was. Step two, it was time to prepare for the fight. So I actually made a dragon bone bow as well as some arrows to go with it because it would probably be quite strong against these dragons. Step three, it was time to find the dragon. So that wasn't actually very hard to do. And then step four, hide inside a hole and fight for your life. For some reason, I killed this ice dragon with one arrow. And I was like, wow, this is easy peasy. But no, there was actually another dragon and he was probably the one that did all the damage. On day 87, I noticed that this blue dragon was just swimming around in the river. So I shot at him. He got really mad and scared me. And then he just went back in the river. So I was like, how am I supposed to kill him? So I made a hole near the river carefully shot at him and there he was mad. But I was quite confident when suddenly he just removed the entire roof of the hole above me. So yeah, that was a little bit scary, but I didn't back down. I continued shooting and finally I killed him. And yeah, this was much more difficult than the one shot on the very first ice dragon. But I was not done yet because on day 88, I got my real revenge. I attacked a green dragon, the dragon that had killed me twice and my beloved pets. And soon enough, he was no more. I had finally had my revenge, but I still had to accomplish two goals, kill a level five dragon and tame a baby dragon. 
So to actually get a dragon egg, you have to kill a level 5 dragon. So I went down in the caves and shot at the dragon I'd found on day 2. What is very scary is that when you shoot a level 5 dragon, they basically make their way to the surface to attack you and they are destructive. By the way, in the last video, I saw a comment of someone saying, why do girls shake the mouse when they're scared? Well, you know what? I'd like to see you fight a level 5 dragon without shaking the mouse once, Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> But yeah, on a more serious note, this was the most terrifying fight I have ever done against any mob in Minecraft. I mean, this dragon is relentless, and if I didn't have the fire potions, I would be dead in an instant. What is also very difficult with level 5 dragons is the fact that they destroy the hole you're hiding it super easily so I had to dig like really deep into the ground and it was so scary. And after a day and a half of shooting and burning, finally I noticed the dragon wasn't moving anymore and he was dead so this nightmare was finally over. After looting his scales and his bones, I made my way back home and I actually used the bridge that had been destroyed by a dragon to place the egg I'd got and then I lit a fire and waited for it to hatch. On day 91, I went to get Kiki and Tootsie because all the dragons in the area were dead and they weren't at risk anymore. I then suddenly realized that the egg was missing so I went to look everywhere and finally I found this lovely tiny red baby dragon. So she was a female and I placed her on my shoulder and decided to put her in the house you know just in case she would run away again. Yeah I didn't want anything bad to happen to her. I decided to name my brand new companion Smaug even though she was much nicer than the dragon in The Hobbit. But yeah, now I was facing the problem, I had this tiny baby dragon, 8 days left and yeah, I kind of wanted to fly around with her, so I had to make some dragon meal and gave it to her. Next, it was time to fight that Gorgon, I really wanted to go see, you know, how she would be and all. But, very important, I made myself a blindfold because yeah, she would instantly turn me to stone if I didn't have one. I crept inside the structure and it was so scary because I couldn't see anything, there was water everywhere. And I turned on the subtitles to see where she was and finally I found her and she was actually pretty easy to kill because she was stuck behind a spider that she had turned into stone. So yeah, that was pretty funny. Once she was dead, I had a look at all the statues made out of spiders and skeletons that were turned to stone. And I also was able to use her head as a weapon and I was able to turn anything I wanted into stone. So that was pretty cool. I mean, this ice and fire mod is an absolute jewel. It's really incredible. During the night, we all went to kill off as many mobs as possible to get a bunch of bones to make dragon meal. As for day 93, I finally decided to make myself a little house and I thought what would be perfect would be to make myself a hobbit hole. So for the main shape of the hobbit hole, I was inspired by Gold Robin's build with basically a large circle in the middle and two smaller ones on each side. As I was surrounded by a birch forest, I decided to use some birch for the framework and for the walls. At first I wanted to use some sandstone, but then for a bit more contrast, I replaced everything with quartz. I also started digging out a bit the interior and obviously I had to add a few archwood leaves all around because yeah, that purple just looked really nice. And guess what? Dory had actually wandered out of her pond. I wasn't really sure how and why, so I bought her back in and she was happy to be able to swim around again. On day 95, I worked on the interior of the house. I made a little cooking area and then I just had a bed on each side and I made the floor out of birch planks. So yeah, here is the finished result. It's pretty simple but quite cute, I thought. It fit well with the rest of the base. And then I jumped onto Paco's back and we flew over to get some of the scales I'd placed in a chest and actually found a black dragon that I'd probably gotten killed by another dragon so I looted him as well. 
That night, I was actually able to craft myself a dragon scale armor, and obviously, I decided to use the green scales of that dragon that had tortured me so much throughout this video. I also continued feeding Smaug, and yeah, she was growing pretty fast. I couldn't even see my head when I looked in third person, so yeah. I actually owed it to QB to finish up his tank. I'd really forgotten about it because of the dragon attacks and all, but yeah, I was determined, and I had a lot of issues with the water, and I finally figured out a technique. I would basically fill up the whole top layer of water, and then when I would just dig out the dirt, the entire pond would fill up. So once I was done with the top layer of the tank, I decided to put efficiency on my shovel, and I removed all the dirt, and finally the tank was accomplished. On day 99, I made Smile grow so much. She was huge. She couldn't even fit on my shoulder anymore. So yeah, that's proof she was getting quite big. And just look at her fly around. She is absolutely beautiful. I had also finished decorating the area where all my land animals would live. And they really, really enjoyed it. That night when Smaug was sleeping, I went to kill off a bunch of skeletons, you know, to get the final bones I needed. And finally, on day 100, she grew so big, I could climb onto her back and we could soar through the skies. And obviously, to have a little bit of fun, I went to the village and I burnt the wandering trader alive and destroyed everything in my path. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I thought it was so exciting. And I truly fell in love with the mods in this video, especially the Ice and Fire mod as well as the Worm Roost. So here is a list of all the mods as promised, and I really hope you will enjoy the Ice and Fire mod yourself. By the way, I've got a special announcement, the next video will actually be a 1.19 Let's Play. Love you.